The Holy Spirit is the only one who knows, who remembers who we really are. The Holy Spirit is the only bridge back. It doesn't matter which religion you follow, or which philosophy, which spirituality. The Holy Spirit goes by many different names in many traditions. It can be called many different names, but it's just one unifying Holy Spirit. When Jesus spoke and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me, it wasn't a man speaking. Who would believe a man telling you that? Or a woman? Or a rabbit? If a rabbit spoke to you, said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me, would you believe it? No, not even Bugs Bunny. You would not go for it because there is no form that is the way, the truth, and the life. The Spirit doesn't have a form. The Spirit can use forms and use words. We know that of the Holy Spirit, but nobody's ever seen the Holy Spirit. Nobody's ever perceived the Holy Spirit because it's a presence. It's a presence of that. So, ultimately, poverty, chastity, and obedience are beautiful calls back to forgive and remember who you really are. Now, once you start to get into this thing about can you can you still have like cars and houses and bank accounts and all these things and be a child of God? No. Because why? Because I said that last night. What you have is what you are. But to the ego, having is possessing. Under the ego's perception, you can have a body, you can have a bank account, you can have a husband or a wife, you can have a, a pet, you can have all these things in the ego system because it's saying what you have is what you get. And it's very specific and it's very much involving possessions. If somebody says, do you have a million dollars? You have to go check your bank account or maybe you're where do, do I have a million dollars? But you see, it's very specific. It's either some digital numbers in some bank account, or it's stuffed somewhere in pillows or in paper and coins. Actually, that couch that we moved, we were helping Jeff move it, and a five-dollar bill came out. <laughs> Just to give me that. <laughs> that's mine. That's mine. It's my couch, it's my cushions, and that's my five-dollar bill. <laughs> and, but you see, everything that we talk about in terms of form is in terms of that. Now, people may say, well, I don't know if the Course is really teaching that. That seems a little bit extreme. Uh, that's getting a bit extreme there. Well, it is extreme, but not to the Holy Spirit. It's like natural to the Holy Spirit, and it's extreme to the ego. And so, there's a part in the, in the Manual for Teachers where it's talking about the, the characteristics of God's teachers and you get to number seven, and it's generosity. So it's, what does Jesus have to say about generosity? Generosity sounds like that would fit in with sharing, and we want to be truly generous. He says, the teacher of God does not want anything that he cannot give away. What would he want it for? He could only lose because of it. Ah, that's a very interesting couple senses too. That does relate to what we're talking about because anything that he could keep for him or herself alone, anything that he could possess, anything that he could say that is mine or could control would be by definition asking for loss. Because you can only share the thoughts of God. You can only share the ideas of God. So anything other than the thought of God or the idea of God that you attempt to share is really, if we take the disguises off of it, it's really an attempt to possess, to own, to keep something separate from God's will.